Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief, the fastest dental podcast on the internet today. We are so excited, as we always are, when we have a dentist on with us, um, a dentist who's an entrepreneur, um, a great book that you need to check out. Uh, Dr. Lanier, say hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm an entrepreneur dentist, but not the only one. I just I wrote the book, Entrepreneur Dentist, uh, How to Exit Your Business Rich, and um, I think it's a, a good topic, so I'm happy to meet everyone. Yeah, it's a it's a fantastic topic, and I hope we could dive into that. But first, what I want to do is dive into how did you become a dentist yourself? What 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 uh, led you into dentistry? Well, I it was it was kind of funny. I, I fell into biology because it seemed to be the one subject that I could do well in an undergraduate school, uh, the biological sciences, whereas most people would would have gone the other way. And I happened to see. Um, this this dental office not too far from where I was in school, and the there was a big Jaguar parked in the driveway, and I was like, "Damn, that's a nice car." And he's a, he's a dentist, and you know the thing of dentists working uh, owning their own business that was the ideal thing for me is to own your own business. So from get go, I saw it as an entrepreneurial venture. You could own your own business, and you could make a lot of money. Yeah, and so, you know, you clearly had incredibly successful practices um, and you've exited practices, correct? I think you've done that a few times. Tell us what led you to get to where you're at now, right? So now you're helping dentists. How did you go from being a dentist to helping patients to now helping dentists to realize their, their goals and dreams? Well, my when I entered dental school part, and um, I didn't realize until later, but in, in my yearbook, um, I think my sophomore year, it was asking, what are your aspirations once you graduate? And mine was as an entrepreneur and uh, using dentistry as an entrepreneur. So it's always been the thing for me to have something as a platform that I could use to, to do business. And I come from a sales and marketing background. So uh, being able to, to uh, sell dentistry and then getting other dentists to work because I've always believed in leveraging. If all I could get paid for was what I was going to do, then I knew I was going to be in trouble because then it's just the same thing, work, work, work. And I, I believe in work and I work hard all the time. But I, I kind of, in my mind, I came up with the slogan, if your money stops every time you stop, you probably need a better plan. And that was... That was the thing that kind of led me. I got other dentists working for me. I built more offices. I leveraged that, formed a network, learned to, um, and took some business courses so that I, I learned to understand the uh, efficiencies and economies of scale. And once I could put that together, I could see my, my way out. I said, well, there's a lot of people that would like to buy something like this. And so I used it as a product. I mean, and that's not to demean healthcare because a lot of times people start thinking that, well, you're bastardizing it because you're in it for the wrong reason. You're, you're in it making money, you know? And I think if you put that many years into something, you would like to get something out of it. So I, I think going into dentistry, a lot of people I think wanted to become private practitioners. However, the landscape has changed and made it more difficult and, and a lot of times you don't understand how to convert that into something that's lucrative. So I think I can help a lot of people in that area. Yeah. So let's talk about helping people and helping dentists. So, you, you know, I, I know you're out there, you, you have this book, um, you know, how to exit your dental business rich. So, you know, in your travels, the, the people that you talk to, the, the doctors that call you, What's the biggest thing that gets in the way of them exiting their practice rich? Well, the biggest thing is I, I, what I see is most of the time they can't really uh, put together a platform that they can scale and and they get trapped into having 
one or maybe two offices doing it as a mom and pop operation. And until you standardize and and start using experts, it's kind of it really is difficult to go from what most people have if they have a single office to having four or five, 10 offices because most don't take the time to learn to put together a platform so that they can scale from. Almost like if you were doing um, a McDonald's or some kind of franchise, you have to have all of your standardization and all of your systems in place and then you can replicate but a lot of times people go out and start trying to grab another office and another office, but they have no systems in place and then it becomes chaotic. And then they're having problems and all, all kinds of things are happening. And I think the, the main thing is stop, sit back, work out systems as if you're going to expand and then expand rather than expand first and then trying to put some systems together. Sure. And that, that makes a lot of sense. But let's say that, and, uh, and I, I know we have listeners out there that fit this. Let's say you've already got the second practice, right? Or maybe even the third practice, but let's start with the second. And you don't have those systems in place and you have chaos and, and you can't have a, an assistant from one practice covering your other or someone answering the phones because everything's different. How do you fix it? Like, what are three steps that you can take right now to start working out that, that process and those, those processes? Well, First, uh, I think you you put out the fires first and foremost, and you do everything you can to put out fires. You identify the problem and then say, well, we're going to resolve it. But the way we're going to resolve it is so that it doesn't pop up again. And now you write a plan. This happened. And to prevent this from ever happening again, everybody is going to do it this way. And this is the way we do it. And that's how you get past that chaotic thing is say, this is my standard process. This is the way we do it until I or my group of managers may come up with a new way of doing it. This is the only way it's done. And this is how this is. And now you start writing your book on this is how we do it. This is how we do it, because that is what your systems and processes are. This is how we do it book. And that, that way, anybody can walk in and pick up the This Is How We Do It book, and they, they can do it. And you could be in the Bahamas somewhere, you know, kicking back during the sipping my type. But you have to have that, and you have to have all of your standardization for each little technique, and I not a technique procedure. And then you can uh, pretty much take a, a vacation. But when, when things are on fire, the first thing is just identify the fire and put out the fire. But at the same time, you're working on coming up with systems. So talk about these systems for a little bit. When you when someone has a solid system in place, right, and it's 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 a proven system that has worked time and time again, and they they work that system, how likely are they to fail? Very unlikely to fail if it's something that's worked over and over again. If, if you start out first and foremost with um, a viable plan, and I think not enough people test the viability of their plan. If you're uh, a lot of times, I think, especially with dentists, we look for a good deal. So and so and so is selling the dental office, it's already built out and has everything in it, and they're selling it for X amount. And they, you know, they see so many, well, they tend, and I've done that before. I bought practices and then it doesn't really fit my model. You find something that's, uh, the rent is low, but the reason it's low is because it's located over the meat market or in the back of something on a bad street. Sure. So you start out with more of the ideal and you work from there. If you get trapped in a place and, um, you know, I, a doctor called me. She was uh, in a building. She got moved out. She was getting a lot of referrals from other physicians and so forth. But then she moved out of a building, and she wasn't getting any patients or referrals. And I was asking her, well, you know, let me see your website. She didn't have a website. I was like, well, how the hell are you going to market? Because if you don't have patients and you don't have a constant flow of new patients, you are in the wrong business. First and foremost, you have to be able to market, whether it's internal marketing, external, uh, whether it's advertising uh, or co combination of all of them. 
if you're not a marketing person or you don't hire a marketing person, you don't have a constant flow of new patients, you're in trouble. If you have enough new patients, a constant flow of, it's hard for a dentist to fail. It really is. I, I've seen some of the worst mistakes, but because dentistry is, is lucrative, it's hard for most to fail at it, but most aren't very successful because they don't have those practices in place. Yeah, makes sense to me. But let's talk about um, your book and your website's uh, entre the, uh, is entrepreneurdentist.com. Uh, great domain name, by the way. But let's let's uh, talk about the book. Um, I was kind of flipping through it a little bit or, or flipping through the guide. It's 30 Days to Building a Successful uh, Dental Service Organization, correct? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm doing a lot of videos, posting articles and so forth. 30 days on how to build your own um, DSO. Let's let's talk about day one, right? And and I know obviously we want people. You want people to buy the book, and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but what is day one? Give us a little insight. What does day one look like in those thirty days? Well, what I'm doing is actually because I I'm building TKO Properties is another website that is. Well, we're, we're constructing right now, but that's about turnkey offices. It's very hard for a dentist to come out now and, and build an office, a solo practice, and, and to do well by themselves. You need, because there are so many systems, whether it, it, it covers accounts payables, accounts receivables, billing, um, uh, legal, HR, there's so many things that it scares, and, and rightfully so, it will scare most people out of it. Because unless you have a network where you could stretch all of these costs out and get economies of scale, then you're kind of working against yourself. So what we're doing now is day one, we want a doctor to be able to walk in and everything is there, the right location, the right marketing, all of the patients, all of the equipment and everything they sign. Um, the the bank is is good with it because this is a partner that's already been successful before. They've yeah. seen these models. They are not uh, stepping off. And and the the um, I guess the backup or the senior partner is providing a lot of the things, helping build the systems for the younger dentists because it, it's no way you replace experience. You have to get the experience and the insight from the experts. So I think the thing now is the merger of the junior partner and the senior partner. And then it starts out, you're owning your own practice, but you're not, so you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And that way it's a great mix. Yeah, that's a, I think a terrific, it's an amazing concept and it's a brilliant concept. And I definitely want, I'm gonna have you back on um, to talk about that. Um, for sure, because I, I think it's it's for startups or people considering startups. It's a model they need to look at and they need to know about. Um, Dr. Lanier, I want to I want to tell you how thankful I am to have you here. I'm grateful um, that I, I think we'll get you back on here to talk about um, TKO properties again. The the website URL is entrepreneurdentist.com. Easy way for people to get in touch with you there. Easy way, entrepreneurdentist.com. Uh, and they can also just send entrepreneur dentist. I have an easy one, entrepreneurdentist at gmail.com. Email me. I hit him back. Yep. Experience, wisdom. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.